Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all having a great week um, and thanks for all the concern. Um, had a bit of an accident with the angle grinder as you'd have seen in the last update uh, and thankfully I've still got all my appendages or whatever you want to call them and my face is all right. Um, so yeah, um, I take the feedback, I take the criticism. Um, there were a couple of failings there um, the main failing, the root cause of that happening was I wasn't using a secondary grip. So the angle it was at, um, if you look back, the way I had the angle grinder held uh, was in this sort of position. So the one-handed grip and a steady with the second hand, that's just not good enough. When that kicks back, it's it's going to hurt. Um, so generally these get taken off because you want to get into a tight area or something like that and there's a big element of complacency here so I'd have taken that off long ago not refitted it if I had had that secondary grip while using the angle grinder uh, it would have still kicked but I would have uh, just the turning force the pivot point I would have had the I would have had the grip to be able to keep control of the angle grinder uh, once it gets out of control it gets quite dangerous and I'm not sure anyone's actually been killed by an angle grinder, but there are some very nasty injuries. And I'm very conscious, I'm out here working on my own. If something happened to me, um, I probably wouldn't, or no one would probably find out, my wife would probably find out when she sends the kids out to come and say goodnight, so I could be there for hours. Um, so there is a lot of safety around angle grinders, they're very dangerous, but do not take my word for it. Go and do a bit of research, go and read up on them. You can even get a, a BAF accreditation for grinding wheels and angle grinders, and that's really worth doing if you've got the time and the money to do it. But there are obviously some, you know, just some basic things you can do. Uh, wearing gloves with some sort of cut resistance, abrasion resistance, you can get like these rigger gloves, which are uh, pretty heavy duty. Uh, I always wear gloves, they have a limited amount of cut through resistance. If it touched this blade, you would still get cut, but probably not quite as bad without any gloves at all. And goggles is really important. Um, now my goggles are polycarbonate and they're actually rated to take an angle grinder blade um, without going straight through them. But you want to be careful because you can buy some cheap pairs of goggles and they just won't be up to a, taking an angle grinder hit. Um, I wear goggles, full face mask is far, far better. Uh, I don't have one, um, maybe I should invest in one. Um, the reason I generally don't wear one is because of when you're trying to get in and out of places with a full face mask on, it's difficult. If you're working on a jig like we have done in the past with kit or something like that, it's probably far more practical. One sort of big tip, which I, which I always do, um, which is, is just a bit of common sense really. So the grinder guard, I'd say that is the most important piece of safety kit on an angle grinder. These discs do break and they break quite regularly, <clears throat> uh, especially if you're not using the grinder correctly. And without that disc on there, well, who knows where that blade's gonna end up, at least with the, the, the guard on there and my guard rotates. So the idea is you rotate it um, so that you're always protected by the guard. And sort of secondary tip for me is I, I, I try to, although you, you do forget, you do get complacent sometimes, I try to never grind directly in line with the blade. So um, I'm sure if you go back through videos, you'll probably see me doing that, but I, I consciously think when I'm grinding to move to the side. That way, if that blade breaks or something kicks back, it's gonna go over my shoulder. And probably the worst thing that's gonna happen is I might get cut on the arm or something like that. But if you're directly in line with it, you're going to get a smack in the face um, or you're going to get a disc in the face, which just is not good. So anyway, safety lesson over. Um, let's get cracking today. Uh, I've got a full day on it today, or most of the full day anyway. It's Sunday. Got up late. Um, I want to see how far I get today. So I've got the whole front end ready to go on now. 
I need to get the seal finished on this side. I am still waiting for a flitch panel, so hopefully I can get the inner seal repaired, I can get the outer seal on, um, and then maybe start cutting the front end off. So that's me waffled on for ages. Uh, let's get stuck into the action. Right guys, back to the welding. Um, I won't film all of this, or I'll probably time lapse it actually. I won't talk through it though, because I have done on a previous video. Uh, but there's something oddly satisfying about watching someone welding. I'm, I'm always keen to watch. I like watching Urch Fab. Um, so, um, today's CAD template of choice is chicken and pasta bake from Tesco's. Uh, good quality cardboard. You can write on the back of it with a pencil and it's recyclable. Let's get on. Right, a few people have asked me about getting this lip off. I did time lapse it in the last video, but I didn't go into a great deal of detail in how it come off. Um, it's not easy to do, so I thought, I'm not gonna time lapse it this time, but I will just take you a few step by step. First thing we're gonna do is use this um, strip disc, they're called, and it's like, um, it's like a fibrous wheel, um, bits of string, and they're coated in like, um, carbide abrasive but it strips paint off very very well and the idea of stripping the paint off is we want to be able to see where the spot welds were so if i show you a little bit clip down the bottom um and this is showing where i use the strip disc on the roof and you can clearly see where the spot welds are that's ideally what you want to see but the problem is this lip corrodes and it's very difficult to see where those spot welds are. If it's like the roof, it's really easy. You just get a spot weld drill, then drill out those spot welds. Happy days. But this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to strip, start stripping this back, and hopefully I can show you the next step. Right then, so that's that all cleaned back with a strip disc on the top, and the same again on the bottom as well. But what you'll notice, if you look on the top, you can see the indentations 
of the previous spot welds. Now, it's better at the back on this because it ain't as rusty, but as you go towards the front, they're harder and harder to see, especially down the front there. So what we're gonna do, uh, opposite to the other side, we're gonna start at the back and then peel forward. Uh, let me just move the camera and I'll show you what we're gonna do next to drill these spot welds out or to try and make it a bit easier anyway. Okay, right, next step. So we wanna drill this out from the underneath. Um, obviously we can see where the original spot welds are now and I've gone along so far. The next one I've got to do is this one here um, and to make it easier because we can see it I'm just going to get a centre punch just to help us align in the drill bit. Give that a good punch and then we're using the spot weld drill bit. Uh, it can be a bit of a pain this just because I'm drilling upwards which is how it hurt my wrist last time. It's on a low speed setting because you don't want to be going too fast. Um, we align the drill bit in the hole and we're just going to drill that now and then you can usually just start to see the pop push up when you're almost through. <laughs> Didn't quite see that one, but oh, it's just started to come through there. Don't know whether you can see that on camera, but I can just see that dimpling up there, which is where the well, the spot weld drill bit's pushing through. If you go too far, you'll just pull, push, weld, all the, or drill all the way through the panel. It's not a complete disaster that, there are ways around it. Um, so next, moving along, next one's about there. You can actually lay coat that drill bit in the hole. You can sometimes feel when you've gone through. Again, I can just see that started to dimple up there. So we'll move along, we'll carry on. Next, I'll show you how to strip it back. So the next bit, when it actually comes to peeling off this lip here, all I can say is it, it's just not easy. Um, I use various different things to do it. So I've actually got this wood chisel here, um, which is not ideal, but it is nice and sharp. And it's pretty good for just getting right up in between and just starting to get it peeled back. After that, really, you really want a chisel that is... Uh, harder than the spot weld otherwise it just chews it up so these are cold chisels i've got a couple of them in fact i've got three i've lost one of them um they're just sharpened to a point they're actually snap on one so they're really good quality steel but obviously they're a bit chunky but where you need to take the head off a spot weld that that will go through that quite nicely other tools i use so i've just got a battery powered uh cut off tool it's, it's got barely any torque this thing but when you just need to just nick a little bit just to get the final bit out that works quite well uh, and I use um, a carbide burr obviously on a die grinder as well so there is no one tool sorry about that battery went flat um, as I was saying there is no easy way of doing this it's just various different tools it is literally peeling it off inch by inch um, this is probably going to take me total maybe an hour and a half, something like that. So it isn't easy, isn't quick. So let me carry on. Let me get one of these out for you. Um, so I generally start off with a sharp chisel.
when you get like that, that's um, that's quite hard up against it. I don't want to whack it too much because I just end up bending this quarter panel. I think you get the idea like I say it's a long slow boring process uh, basically if you get the drill the spot well drilled out perfectly 
it comes out really easily but there's always a little edge or something like that that catches you can't quite get it out i find the the um sort of die grinder uh it's just a dremel or dremel type with a carbide burr on there is quite nice because you can just finish off the welds right then so that's that lip completely off now um as you can see uh there's a spot weld about every inch maybe just under every inch um some are easier to get out than others sometimes you get on a nice little run three or four spot welds just go over a little tap um and it seems really easy but you get some bits as you can as i sort of pointed out that you can't see where the spot weld is so you just kind of with them i measured the same gap drilled it started to tap it and then you work out um how to get round it the probably i've not used it before probably the most useful tool though has been that dremel with the carbide burrs on because you you never get these spot welds perfect or rarely do you get them perfect anyway so you always get a little bit of weld on the corner and that carbide burr you can just go in there grind it away and get it off so uh, that's the seal ready to go back on this side now so that's the seal all prepared and in weld through primer now um don't know whether you can see the lip But what you what you kind of have to do try not to drill all the way through i did in a couple of places but that's quite handy actually because i haven't got a spot welder yet so i can use those holds uh just to weld through to hold the seal in place on the lip um that works out all right actually um and you just have to go along the edge afterwards and just dolly it a bit get it all back flat again uh, someone was asking me actually what what did i do about the back here so the seal slides between the uh, rear heel board and the rear floor pan and you can just bend down the heel board which is what I've done here uh, and you can actually just fish out the existing bit of seal that's under there uh, it doesn't go under that far um, and it's not that hard to get out to be honest around the corner here there's like one spot weld I think uh, and then I just used a combination of the sort of carbide burr screwdriver and poking around a bit of a chisel to get it out and uh, obviously once that goes back under there, I'll just bash it back round just to get it all straight again. Oh, and while I was here, I forgot to do it on the other side, wish I had done. Um, but I just took the subframe bolts out just while I had the opportunity to WD-40 them from the back. So I took the subframe bolts out, uh, put, covered them in copper grease and put them back in again. So that shouldn't be a problem if I, if I ever have to take the subframe out at a later date. Um, oh, and I've got the whole A panel off now. Um, so I've just got to get this seal welded back on. So it's all prepped there, ready to go back on. Uh, all the holes have been pre drilled in it. And we'll get that on, get that finished, and then it's on to the front end. Right then, that's the seal done on the other side now. The masking tape's on the top lip just because I still need to spot weld the top lip um, just to stop it rusting. But it's looking good. Um, next up, the front end. Right, well that's it for the moment. Um, it's getting late now. I've been on the car all day. I've got that, the other side done, seal on, inner seal repaired. Uh, I've cut both A panels off as well. And it looks like the side I've just done is going to have to have a full uh, flitch panel on that side. Um, like I said, I've already got all the body panels now. It's all heritage stuff. Um, so really, sort of next step is to get the front end off. Um, I'm not going to attempt, attempt to replace that flitch panel at the moment till all the front's off because it will make it so much easier. Um, seems to have taken me a long time today, but... I think it's just old age. I do struggle now getting down on the floor. I'm putting a pair of seals on on your back is not easy. Um, but it's done now. <clears throat> Hopefully not too much more crawling around on the floor. And I can just concentrate on getting all this body work done now. Um, so I'm after some tips if you know of any. So uh, just aligning it all up. 
So we put a complete front end on project kit and what I'd done with that um, was line it up off the bonnet. And what I've basically done was mark up the bonnet, the hinges and exactly where the bonnet fitted perfectly. So got the bonnet to fit perfectly before we took everything off, marked the hinges, uh, took all the front end off and then put the bonnet back on and used that to line up the scuttle panel and then obviously once the scuttle panel's in everything should line up forward of that so inner wings obviously stay on there they can line up with a bonnet and then you can line it all up so what I'm going to try just because when we've done it on kit it was a real pain fiddling around getting the bonnet back in exactly the same position I think I'm going to drill the hinges with a couple of pilot holes at each end just maybe three mil holes so I can insert drill bits in so I'll get it I'll get the bonnet perfectly aligned with the old front end drill two holes on each hinge put three mil drill bits in so when it goes back together I can just put the hinges on align those holes and in theory the bonnet should be in exactly the same position and then basically I will align all the front end or I'll start with the scuttle panel align the scuttle panel to the bonnet and then everything forward of that uh, should be all right but if anyone else has got any hints and tips for how to do that let me know as I say with kit kit turned out fine actually we had a little bit of fettling to do around the front I'm just keeping my fingers crossed because it's a heritage front end everything should be okay um, <clears throat> but yeah that's it for the moment I think like I say it's been a long day today and I think I've had my money's worth out of these gloves haven't I <laughs> so uh, I think I deserve a new pair of gloves um, pretty pleased with how it's going. Um, you know, I would like to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think for me, that's kind of phase one complete. That's kind of the structural welding bit. Um, not quite as bad as it could have been worse. Um, I'm reasonably happy that it, it, it wasn't. It was probably as expected, actually. Um, it could have been a lot worse and it wasn't. Uh, but thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, thanks for staying till the end and watching me waffle on. If you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing uh, just to get the latest updates and that sort of thing. And at this point, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.